This time on Cryptic Cryptid's YouTube channel, I investigate and explore the cryptic side of the state of Alabama. In search of Alabama cryptids, giants, prehistory, gems, and tourist attractions. Hi, I'm Jenna Bosig. If that sounds interesting to you, then make sure you're subscribed and don't forget to hit the like for this video. I really do appreciate it. Alabama. The lush state of Alabama. Looking at cryptids from modern day sightings and cryptids from ancient past sightings in the area and comparing those with mound sites, giants, and see if there's any kind of overlap going on because it's possible that they are still in the area. Starting with Alabama's cryptids. Evergreen, Alabama claims to be the official Bigfoot capital of Alabama. After several people have been reporting several sightings for several years, it's earned the title. And an excellent source for information and anything you wanna know about Bigfoot in Alabama, you can go to the Alabama Bigfoot Society YouTube page and website. There's been reports from Claiborne County, Russell County, Conakoo County. And another thing that I was surprised to find out is that there have been a lot of UFOs reported in Alabama as well. A lot of them are coming directly from the US government and they've just been declassified. This report was made by the United States government and the names are crossed out, but it says so-and-so was interviewed and stated that he was that he sighted an unidentified flying object 30 to 50 miles southwest of Montgomery, Alabama at approximately 0540 July 23rd, 1948 at an estimated altitude of 5,000 feet. This object was flying northeast to southwest at an estimated speed of at least 500 miles an hour. Reported this to reported this to Rosters Airlines publicity control officials on July 23rd, 1948. This one also from the United States Air Force, the Inspector General Office of Special Investigations. This report of investigation is now unclassified and says unidentified flying objects over Alabama, Georgia, and Mississippi, particularly Dilaquaiga, Alabama. That's dated November 1954. This news article says attention from UFO unreal and has an illustration by the eyewitness and says this is an illustration of what the Fife officers saw in the sky on February 10th. Fife Police Chief Junior Garamy and Assistant Chief Fred Works, who 11 days ago got a close-up view of an unexplained, unidentified flying object three miles south of town, said reporters, have kept them busy and have prompted some fun poking that they believe is not really fair. Garamy said two earlier UFO sightings by police in the area in 1975 and in 1977 did not elicit a fraction of press coverage as the one that bewildered a score of Decomp Countians on the night of February 10th. Works, who also good-naturedly tolerated the teasing that followed news reports, said reporters have hounded him since the sightings. This one, pointing to an object, says Terry Baker, co-owner of the Weekly Post, a newspaper in Rainsville, took this picture Thursday night near Fife. The bright light just above the horizon is believed to be the unidentified flying object, as many that many residents say they have spotted over the past few weeks. And then there's this one. This UFO photograph was turned in, and you've got to remember the time, the year that this happened, but they put this picture in the funnies, in the newspaper, and then this is what they wrote. The recent sightings of unidentified flying objects near Fife is a fascinating mystery to many. Some residents, including those who have made sightings, don't mind having a little fun with the phenomenon. We received this photo in the mail this week and staff members got a kick out of the realistic flying saucer that appears to be hoovering in the air. We thought our readers might enjoy the prank as well. The following letter was included with the photograph. I stayed up 
most of the night hoping to see it again. Never dreamed I'd see it in the in the daylight, but sure enough, I went out to my back porch and it sailed over my house. I run into the house, got my camera and saw it coming back. It was going so fast, I didn't think I'd get a picture of it, but I got a pretty good one. It ain't gonna, I ain't gonna sign my name because I don't like to talk to reporters, but it sure is a UFO. So what do they think? This guy was sitting on his computer doing CGI. So I don't know how they think this guy managed to pull this quote unquote prank off, but they definitely just treated it like a complete joke. And yeah, you can understand why he didn't want to leave his name. There's another sighting here, and it's a drawing of a UFO, and it looks pretty typical. And it says, UFO hovers near mobile home in Blount County. Artist conception of Hayden Mountain UFO sighting. That's in Alabama. Then coming up in August 26, 2023, I absolutely wish that I could be there, is the 18th annual UFO Days Festival in the Fife City Park. Not only UFO sightings, but strange aliens as well. For example, from the com, there's an article about the metal man from Folkville. And a policeman actually snapped four Polaroid photos of this metal man. And what's scary is that in each picture, it's getting closer and closer. So I don't know what happened after he took the pictures, if they must have ran or way or something. But this is like a astronaut, an alien astronaut in a space suit. And it's pretty scary. The other thing going on in Alabama, besides UFOs, are cattle mutilations, where the blood is often just gone from the body. And, you know, the way that they're taking the parts and stuff from the cows with surgical precision and there's no trace, it's something higher technology and it's genetically related. There's still the cattle mutilations going on. It could be aliens. It could be um, a group of advanced hominids or cryptids living underground, That the ones that went hiding. The wolf woman of Mobile, she was beautiful. She was exotic. She was hairy. A creature dubbed the Wolf Woman of Mobile made her appearance to people along Davis Avenue in the community of Plateau. And according to reports in the press register at the time, witnesses described the creature as having the lower body of a wolf and the head of a woman. She was always seen at night stalking residents but never harming anyone. The Wolf Woman is one of several mythological creatures that Alabamans have been reported seeing over the years. So the half-wolf, half-woman creature so frightened the citizens of Mobile that people began calling the press register to report the sightings. And it was April 8, 1971, when the newspaper reported the phenomenon, complete with a drawing of the creature conceived by a newspaper illustrator, listening to as many as 50 phone calls the press register has received day and night in approximately one week. Pretty and hairy. And there have been a lot of reports of dogmen. And there's a report of something called White Fang. And it seems like it's a white wolf creature, a, biped, a bipedal seven-foot white wolf creature. And it's been seen in Happy Hollow, Walnut Grove, Moody's Chapel, and the Wheeler Wildlife Refuge. The creature is known for its ability to move extremely quick, despite its size, and for its eerie screech that sounds like a woman's scream. As for the first people to inhabit Alabama from contentschooldees.com, most scientists think that the first people came to Alabama as early as 12,000 BC. That's about 14,000 years ago. The first people to enter what is now called Alabama arrived during the end of the Pleistocene 
epoch, which was the last ice age, when there still may have been creatures like woolly mammoths and mastodons and 10-foot ground sloths roaming around in the area. There are many Clovis sites in North Alabama and a few across Central and South Alabama and the Coastal Plain, but the hotbed of early native activity appears to be up and around the Huntsville area and throughout the Tennessee River Valley. Brownville, one of the most important archaeological sites in North America with some amazing artifacts that have come from there as well. And back in the day, Moundville was so big, it was America's largest city north of Mexico. It's been referred to as the Big Apple of the 14th century by National Geographic. From AL.com News, the first Alabamans arrived 13,000 years ago, long before Moundsville. And there is no evidence of these early Americans farming animals or crops, so they likely would have been hunter-gatherer nomads, moving along with herds of prey and sometimes wandering great distances to find food. That is such an interesting point that has really been stuck in my mind about how the Mount Billers in Alabama didn't farm. They, they, they weren't farming crops of food to feed everybody, and there were a lot of people to feed. And it seems like they were meat eaters. So, of course, I'm very interested in what caused the disappearance of the mound builder culture in Alabama. So, looking at some dates and stuff, this is what I found out. From ancientorigins.net, Ancient Places, Americas, The Rise and Fall of Moundville, Mississippian Culture, the Moundville archaeological site was occupied from around 1120 A.D. to around 1650 A.D. I've gotten some different dates on that, but at the time of the disappearance, it was in its, it was in its peak. From Alabama.com News, European colonization of North America expanded throughout Florida in the 1500s, and the first Europeans to settle in what is now Alabama were the French at Mobile in 1702. So, Moundville ended, they say here, around 1450. And, you know, as we know, Columbus arrived 1492. Some of these years that they give for the mound builders are obviously estimates because they disappeared. These mound builders were in this area for 14,000 years. They're thriving, and then they disappear at the same time as the arrival of the Europeans, give or take. So basically, fundamentally, and essentially, the mound builders from Alabama disappeared when the Europeans arrived. Where did they go? Where did all their bodies go? If we know that they disappeared intentionally on their own, on their own accord, because of the Europeans arriving. Well, that means they're in hiding. They've been hiding. And with their skill and ability to build mounds, it's not that big of a stretch to think that they went hiding underground in the local wilderness areas. Because they don't farm. Whatever they do to survive to eat, they can do at night, in the darkness of night, hidden from humans, which would be why they disappeared. And a lot of artifacts have come from the Moundville site in Alabama. And looking at some of them up close, they have that that the appendages or at least one coming out of their mouth that is like something we don't have. We don't have tongues like that. All right, is this what is this what they use to suck blood? This creature with these appendages coming out of his mouth looks a lot like Tlaloc, the bloodthirsty Mayan vampire. And this man looks like he is scared for his life. And I wonder what it, this creature would do if it caught him. 
I was wondering what it is that this wolf creature was eating. This drawing of it is, the object he's holding is much smaller in the original one. And it looks just like a heart. And hearts are even pointed like that. And they have that tube coming out of the top. All I had to do was rotate a little, rotate it a little bit. And it really fit in there. And I think that's what that was. And here you see this creature, wolf type creature, with this thing coming out of his mouth that I believe has something to do with something vampirical. And I don't know what it is, what these things are that he has hanging in his inside his arms there. But And here is another one. It's got the weird tongue thing, whatever, coming out of his mouth. And he's holding one of those things that the other one had hanging from his arms. I mean, is it just an arrow? This one, running away with a very strange body shape, has the head of a someone in his hand has the big nose appendage thing and you can see the weapon in his hand is the same one used by this other mound builder giant that is cutting the skull off of his victim his human looking victim they seem to be using the same they have the same weapon of choice next this one also has that something going on with his nose and his mouth. And then this one is missing the central part of the drawing. And you just have to use your imagination as to what these two guys are sucking on that might be tied up to this stick in the middle that we see with some looking like some legs and feet of some kind hanging down. Not very human looking, but what are they doing? Sucking this creature? There's an ongoing debate or something? currently with this University of Alabama and seven Native American tribes who are trying to get the remains, the skeletons of thousands of people. The University of Alabama has the remains of thousands of people from the Moundsville site. And they refuse to give them Native Americans based on the grounds that there's no proof that they are ancestors of the Native American tribes. They keep putting moratoriums on researching the skeletons. So you see... They won't give them back because they can't prove that they're related to Native Americans, but they refuse to do the research. What are they hiding? I don't think it's going to be a good idea if the Native Americans get them back and they rebury them. They bury the truth. They cover it up with dirt, literally. That I am not for, but Keeping these skeletons, all the research and the information, the knowledge and everything to themselves, the very people whose ancestors caused the end of that civilization. And we don't have a good track record of taking care of them. Many have already been stolen and they're not being preserved in a very, they're not being taken care of. So... There's something going on here. Something. There's a part of the cover-up, obviously. What else are we supposed to think? It's very suspicious. But that is currently going on. So in Moundsville, they found a lot, a lot, a lot. I mean thousands of skeletons. And they unburied them. And they... University of Alabama currently has ownership of them. This one is a picture of a very strange looking skull and body, but this says androplastic male skeleton from a pre-Columbian archaeological site at Moundville, Alabama. These two skulls were together 
from, it says, Mound State Monument, Moundville, Alabama Museum of Natural History. This one showing an elongated skull from the Moundville site, and I tried to find more evidence to back that up, but I couldn't. I did find a couple other things about elongated skulls. This one was supposed to be from the Natchez. It says skull of a Natchez Indian mound builder. And then I found this book about Crania Americana, which is about the mound builders and the elongated skulls. But it seems like there was a lot of different types of different hominids, giants and smaller people running around back in the day, before the Europeans came. Coming from the Moundville site itself is an article about giant skeletons being uncovered in Alabama. And it says, Dr. Walter B. Jones was made an honorary citizen of Moundville Wednesday. It was not earth-shattering news, yet in a sense the event caused ripples nationally and even internationally. Jones is the founder of the Mound State Park. He discovered the first ruins of the prehistoric Indian burial grounds in the early 1920s. The director of the University of Alabama Museum of Natural History, Jones, calls Mound State Park the finest in the United States and possibly the most significant in all of North America. It is known as a landmark discovery throughout the world in the field of archaeology. Jones's early discoveries uncovered facts about Indian settlements of West Alabama before recorded history, a race which he says were giant people from six and a half to seven feet tall. And another report coming from Alabama about giants is, here's what it says, Jackson County giant, the most wonderful creature ever seen in Alabama. And now a slight description of this fearful creature will not be out of place and will be quite interesting to scientific men in particular. First, he was carefully and accurately measured with a tape line which A.D. Caperton had taken along for that purpose. His height is 21 feet and 8 inches, 6 feet and 8 inches across the shoulders and arms, 7 feet 9 inches long, fingers, oh, let's get a bunch of measurements. His beard is 6 feet long. The eyes of this monster are most frightful to look upon. They open perpendicularly instead of horizontally. The balls are nearly the size of cantaloupes and indeed look something like them being striped and that stripes coming into focus in the center, variously colored, each alternate stripe being deep, deep red and the other green, and they glare most ferociously. In fact, it was pronounced by the whole 300 to be the most wicked eye they'd ever saw. His mouth is shaped like a triangle, and from it protrude a couple of tusks eight inches long. His complexion is between a pea color and a sky blue. The nails on his fingers and toes are like claws and four inches long. While being measured, he is quite quiet and sullen. Some think him related to the gorilla. Alabama has some pretty amazing petroglyphs. In fact, they are the tallest, they're the biggest petroglyphs in all of North America. They were very hard to find and hard to photograph because they were in places that you wouldn't necessarily notice them. And and I read that to take pictures of them, they had to lay down flat and squeeze into this like tight position and then photograph it in sections and piece it together because it didn't fit, it wouldn't fit all in the camera lens. And so the tallest in all of North America, these are giant petroglyphs, and they're, they resemble petroglyphs made by people from the Ice Age. They're very interesting indeed. And this one, it almost looks like M.C. Escher, and it's wrapped in this ribbon, but there is a snake face that you can see on the creature. These are pretty amazing petroglyphs. And this bird with the big, big nose again, 